right. Good day, champions. This is another episode of Game Time. I'm your host, Noble Mike Jameson, and I get a chance to really share with you uh, another amazing topic. You know, all of these topics are topics that I absolutely love, and it, it really gives me an opportunity to do a deep dive into uh, some of the intimate trainings and knowledge that um, I've got a chance to learn about over the last uh, decade or so uh, in this area. Um, so give me a second. Let me make sure I put my phone on Do Not Disturb <laughs> so we don't have any uh, interruptions here in our presentation uh, for our podcast. But I'm in one of my satellite offices. Obviously, I get a chance to travel um, the country, travel the world uh, to do what I do. But I definitely try not to miss an opportunity to, uh, to participate uh, in the Game Time podcast uh, with you today. So today's topic is um, your strengths and weaknesses are right next to each other. Write that down. Your strengths and weaknesses are right next to each other, okay? And uh, again, it's one of my favorite uh, topics because I get a chance to share a little bit of detail uh, about my story, um, some of the things I talk about when I'm sharing um, to our, uh, the investment community that I'm a part of is um, it gives you a behind the scenes view of, uh, of some of the things that took place with the stories behind the stories. So we do a deep dive into this whole concept of your strengths and weaknesses are right next to each other. So I want you to write that down as your title. Uh, I just want to give you a, a couple examples. So in the business that, that I'm in, okay? In the business that I'm in, or, or any business for that matter, um, it is required of you to be uh, or develop into being a great orator, okay? Uh, someone who can, who can present, who can do a presentation. Now, I'll admit that in the very beginning of my personal journey, uh, that's not where I was, that's not who I was, um, but I became that, okay? I became that. And so when you're in this type of business, uh, particularly the home-based business industry where you're building teams and you're building communities and, and things of that nature, uh, one of the most important uh, aspects of building a team or building communities is duplication. Being able to duplicate yourself as a franchise entrepreneur, okay? Uh, because ultimately what you want to have happen is that other people will join you and they can in turn do what you do, right? That's what we call duplication. They can do what you do um, in the three phases of building a business, you know, prospecting, presentation, and duplication, which is training, right? Three phases. Um, so anyway, in, in the early parts of my business, I wasn't very good at that uh, because I was an introvert by nature, uh, but I became good, okay? Um, and so in doing so, when you become so good at what you do, in this particular case, we're talking about being uh, an amazing presenter, uh, it becomes a challenge because some people could look at your ability to deliver a presentation or a world-class presentation, as one of my mentors would say, and they can in turn see the results that you get, right? Because you do such a great job of talking about the products that you deliver. You do such a great job of answering questions. You do such a great job of onboarding, right? Your presentation, your delivery, that you get some amazing results. You, you know, the average person may be doing two out of 10, three out of 10, but because you're so amazing at what you do, you're getting four out of 10. You're getting five out of 10. Like your enrollment ratio is sensational, okay? Um, so which is, that's a positive, that's a strength to be uh, so great, so good at doing a presentation, at delivering a message, at handling, handling objections that you get such great enrollments, such great participation, such great engagement in that what you're doing. It's amazing, okay? That's a strength. 
the challenge comes in is that you could be so good that it could actually be intimidating to some, right? Uh, because they can look at you and be like, man, this person is so well put together. They're so well polished. They do such an amazing job at everything that they do that that level of intimidation can become uh, a negative because now they're going to look at it as something that they cannot do. So it's not a, a negative on you. Is that people are looking at themselves and like, man, I could never become that. There, I mean, I'm so far from what I see that if I join them, right, I won't be able to have success. You see, it's it's not the success that people are uh, are afraid of, right? It's the failure, <laughs> right? People want success all the time, but they don't want no part of failure, right? And so you're so good at what you do, your strength your ability to deliver, your ability to handle objections, your ability to onboard, your ability to include, you're so good at it, strength, people love you, but because you're so good, it also becomes a weakness because it becomes intimidating to some to join you because they don't think that they that they could do what you do, right? And so in this space, the home-based business space, we have a saying that I want you to write down and it's called master the mundane, M-U-D-A-N-E, master the mundane, okay? And so what it does is it allows a person like yourself who's so good, right, which is a strength, we love that. We want to highlight that. We want to spotlight that. You deserve to be on stages training hundreds of people, thousands of people, right, because you're so good. So we'll highlight your strength, but we don't want it to be so good to where it intimidates the average person from wanting to join you because they believe that they could never become that. So in order to master the mundane, to make sure that that duplication process takes place for you and your community and what you're trying to build, okay, in order to master the mundane, what you have to do in this instance, because your strengths and weaknesses are right next to each other, in this instance, what you have to do is to make sure that every time your mouth is moving, you should be pointing at something. So this is the bridge, okay? This is the bridge. Every time your mouth is moving, you should be pointing at something. Meaning when you're delivering that world-class presentation, right, you can do it off the dome because you're so good at it. You are unconsciously incompetent at this point, right? You know what you know, you know what I mean? It's crazy. You want to make sure that your mouth, when your mouth is moving, that you're always pointing at something, whether it's a placemat, whether it's a bullet point, whether it's outline, whether it's a slide deck, whether it's a PDF, because that allows the person who's potentially intimidated about being, becoming you, right? They want to join you. We want them to join your community, uh, but they see that you're actually going by something, even though you don't need it, right? You, you're mastering the mundane. You're mastering the things that are that, that are that are simple, all right? The simplified things. You master those things. And so in order to bridge the gap between that person being intimidated by how magnificent you are, when your mouth is moving, you should be pointing at something. And so that person can put themselves uh in a comfortable space and say, you know what, if I can, I can do that. Like I can follow an outline. I could, you know, study a slide deck presentation. I could follow a placemat brochure. And so uh, that strength and weakness can now be merged together, right? So I'm giving you solutions at the same time, right? So your strength and weaknesses are right next to each other. By no means do we ask a person to dim their light, right? Because that's not who we are. And that's not who you should be. And so if you have these types of people that are even a part of the community that you are, a part of right now, we're not asking anybody to dim their light. We're sharing with you tactics and philosophies that will help you bridge the gap between, you know, where you are as a seasoned, polished professional, or perhaps where you're going, and to make sure that people can follow you on that journey. You follow? Uh, because their strengths and weaknesses are right next to each other. It's a classic example, right? Uh, another example of that is you may be in a company like I am, that has uh, so many amazing products or services, OK? 
okay, imagine this. You have so many amazing products or services, which is a strength because if you're in a product-based company, for example, and uh, you are building an international team, there are certain laws that can potentially prohibit you from marketing in a country based off an ingredient that's on a particular product. And you may have uh, connected with an, a huge influencer, a huge leader in that particular uh, country that you can't do business with now because a particular ingredient is maybe banned or the amount of that ingredient is above the standard of what, you know what I'm saying, needs to be available in that country. So now, right, and if that's your, your only product to deliver into the international world, therein you have a problem, right? So yes, your strength and weakness is right next to each other. You can have an amazing product uh, that you can't deliver into this uh, country where you have this major influencer at. And that's a problem if you have one great product. If you only have one great product, that would be a problem, okay? Now, having one great product is a strength because you fine-tuned it, people love it, it works when you utilize it the right way. So it's also a strength, but it can also be a weakness because it may not be able to go into different places and countries based off patents and you know things of that nature right now on the flip side of it if you have more than one great product or service okay it's amazing because now that same leader that same influencer that's in that country or that's in that location can change uh can pivot from the product that's not accepted into their region to a product that is so now you're able to generate revenue Right, set up shop in this whole new area where you couldn't do it before because the one product wasn't available or couldn't be accessed in that country. Now it can because you're able to pivot and utilize another product that your company or service uh, that your company may offer, which is a strength. Okay, that's a strength. That's a positive thing to have happen. Now, on the other side, right, the weakness part of it is that have such a uh, such an amazing offer that has so many great products sometimes it becomes confusing to the consumer on actually what to buy <laughs> because everything's so good you've heard the saying before that a, a a confused mind does nothing right a confused mind a confused mind does nothing so once again, the objective is to master the mundane. Write that down. Master the mundane. And so the way that you do that is that you're building a community. You're building a, a business that's, uh, that's not contingent upon one great product, right? Because you have several great products in your offer. And so you are customizing your offer based off the demographic and uh, location of the business that you're trying to build. So it's not a cookie cutter, in other words. So you may have one particular product of your great products, the strength, that you market to one group of people or to one uh, section of the world or to a particular demographic. Uh, and then you have may have another product or service uh, that's great, right, which is a strength, that you market to another one, all right? Uh, but you mastered the mundane where you're not given uh, a presentation where you're trying to share, you know, 5,000 different things, right? I promise you that no, no decision will be made because people will feel overwhelmed. They'll feel like they have to understand everything and then they got to decide, you know, what to buy when they are ready to buy. So you master the mundane by identifying and hanging your, hat on a product um, that's specific to your audience, right? That fit the bell-shaped curve of what you're looking for, right? You, you have an avatar, uh, a prospect avatar that you're looking for, that you're catering towards. And that product should fit the bell-shaped curve of that prospect avatar. So that may be, you know, part of that avatar may be the age group. Hey, I'm looking for 
you know, 21 to, you know, to 40, or I'm looking, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking for people who earn in this particular income range, right? So you built this prospect avatar and then you you model, right? You you select uh, your best in class services that fit that that mold, right? The the, the bell shaped curve of the mold, the, the majority of the mold, okay? Um, and that's how you solve that, right? Because your strength and weaknesses are going to be right next to each other. Sure, it is an amazing opportunity to have so many uh, different services in your offer, or so many different products in your offer. That's a strength, but it also can be a weakness because. Okay, there we go. I really hope that, that my entire uh, message just now wasn't um, muted the whole time, but we should be good to go. Okay, so anyway, so this will give you an opportunity to um, um, to uh, master the mundane when it comes to you know that aspect of of what we're doing and what you're trying. To so let me bring uh, this to a close and kind of share one more uh, story with you. Uh, that's it's a little personal story, okay? Uh, we're talking about your strength and weaknesses being right next to each other. Most people uh, in our space and uh, in our industry start part-time, just like I did, right, 20 years ago. And um, I was very blessed because prior to getting involved in this industry, you know, I worked as an engineer. And uh, I made six figures as an engineer, okay? Built a great corporate career where I became a senior software engineer. So I wasn't just responsible for my uh, job and responsibilities. I actually had a team of people that worked with me. I, uh, I was team lead uh, with a staff of uh, nine engineers, okay? And all the engineers that worked on my team basically made six figures just to kind of paint the picture, right? So that that was actually a strength. It was a strength, right? Remember, your strength and weaknesses are right next to each other. So sure, that was a strength, the fact that I had already established an amazing corporate career that paid a really good money. Um, but the weakness is, um, because I had a, a mental shift where I knew at some point that I would want to uh, retire from my job, it, it, it's more difficult to walk away from a job that pays $140,000 a year than it is to walk away from one that pays $40,000 a year, <laughs> right? You just think about that. You know, it's, a, it's again, it's a strength to, to do very well for yourself in corporate America, okay? Or whatever it is you do, it that is a positive thing. Um, but it's also a challenge because the number in terms of income and profits and revenue that you have to replace is higher, right? So it becomes a weakness. So when I think about people that join the industry or when you think about people that join your team, you know, sure, we would love the, uh, the, the person that has the great influence. We would love the person who's established themselves in life. And we would love the person who has the, uh, the home, uh, the two cars, uh, the structured family. Of course, we would love that person, okay? We would love them. But sometimes the transition for that person to go from, hey, they got the successful career that they, that they you know, are, do very well with, but they hate, and to help that person transition to the entrepreneurial world can be a little bit more challenging the person who doesn't have that type of career, right? But they don't own that type. They don't. Uh, earn that type of money on an annual basis. Uh, and, the, and the person, you know, has the desire to do so, have the burning desire and the willingness to work to do so. So sometimes, obviously, it's easier for the person who hasn't done as well, okay, who hasn't done as well to make that transition because they don't have as much to replace, right? Your strength and weaknesses are right next to each other. And so when it came to me, I had established an amazing corporate career, Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, because of the philosophies that I was learning in uh, through my personal development uh, in the home-based business arena, I was starting to uh, apply some of those principles in my in my corporate career, which paid which played a huge role on 
uh, me getting promotions and things of that nature. As a matter of fact, at the very peak of my uh, engineering career, uh, where I had the nine engineers that reported to me and we did infrastructure and database and, and uh, all those cool things, right? I, um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Okay, so we're talking about mastering the mundane. We're talking about uh, your strength and weakness being right next to each other. So anyway, for me, it was very difficult uh, to make the transition. Okay, I had done well for myself and I needed to figure out a way that I could transition out of my job, okay? Now, here I was, a person who, um, every time I got a review on my job, I was in exceed expectations. So, you know, when you do your reviews, they're gonna, they're gonna mark on how well you perform the previous year. So it's like, you know, uh, needs improvement, uh, meets expectations, exceeds expectations and outstanding or something like that, right? And so every year from the moment I made the transition from being an average engineer to being at the top of my class, I was an exceeds expectation. So not only did I do my job, I exceeded my job. And that was the mindset that I had, right? I exceeded expectations. And so uh, there became a point in the uh, corporate culture right? We call it corporate politics, where someone that I would always butt heads with got a promotion one level above where I was. So they became a director in this particular company. And I was a senior engineer, senior engineers report to directors. So for a long time, we were peers, right? Uh, but this person got a promotion to the director's level. Why? Because her best friend got a promotion to a VP. And he pulled her up. He did exactly what I would have done, okay? But now this person who I had bumped heads with, right, uh, became my boss. So I go from a person who every year was getting and exceeds expectations because I'm over-delivering on what my job requires, working all the hours, right, to getting a needs improvement. Think about that. I went from an exceeds expectations every year to a needs improvement, my first review with reporting to this person. Yeah, it didn't look good, right? <laughs> needs improvement. I'm like, what in the world? Uh, so anyway, so we go through this whole corporate politics. Hey, listen, I, I, I understand the game at this point. I have been, in, been an engineer for 10 years. We all know how politics work on the job, right? But I'm getting a needs improvement now. Uh, so you fast forward about six months. We're doing, you know, another uh, project uh, uh, implementation. We're getting ready to go live uh, with a particular client. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what the scenario was, but something happened. Oh, I do know what it was. Uh, because I was a senior engineer, I, um, I had flexibility. Right? I had some flexibility. I got tenure. I got seniority. And I have flexibility. So I thought. Um, and so that flexibility meant that, I mean, I'm working 60, 70, 80 hours a week at times. So sometimes, you know, I may not necessarily take an hour lunch. It may be an hour 15 because I may be going to meet whoever uh, for lunch. And this one particular time, instead of taking an hour lunch, it was maybe an hour and 15 minutes, maybe 20. Okay. <laughs> I'll just give, give a few more minutes. But anyway, this particular person recognized that it wasn't an hour. Right by the book, it wasn't an hour, and so when I got back, uh, I got called into the office, and uh, and I'm here with HR, so I'm totally blindsided, and now I get put on probation. So now here I'm like, holy crap, what is going on here? I go from exceeds expectations on all of my reviews prior to this, to now I'm getting the needs improvements on my review. Now here it is, six months or so later. And now I'm getting uh, a put on probation for uh, coming, you know, taking a, a lunch that was too long. When I'm obviously we already put in all these crazy hours, but by the letter of the book, that's what it is. Okay, so obviously I can see the writing on the wall. This is not going to end well, right? This is not going to end well. And at this time, my business, right, my home based business was paying me anywhere from six to $10,000 a month. 
and I'm doing four or five meetings a week after work, you know, on the weekends or whatever to build that business. And it's paying really well. And I'm enjoying the fruits of my labor, by the way, because I, I went to the Cadillac dealership uh, in Atlanta where I reside. Uh, I walked into the dealership. They did not have an Escalade truck on the lot that I liked. I picked up their catalog and I went through and I built a customized truck with custom paint, custom wheels, custom everything. I think it was, it ended up being about $90,000 worth of, worth of uh, customizations that I did to this truck. And I had it delivered to my house. And that's what I would pull up the work in. You know what I mean? So I can imagine um, you know, how certain people may have felt about that, right? Again, your strength and weaknesses right next to each other. It is an absolute strength. The fact that I could build that type of business on a part-time basis while maintaining uh, the type of career that I had, that was a strength. But it also became a weakness because some people uh, don't applaud your success. You may think they're giving you a pat on the back, but most of the time they got a knife in their hand. Yeah, you may think they're giving you a pat on the back and celebrating your success, but a lot of times they got a knife in their hand. And so because I had uh, had that type of success, it became a weakness and a challenge for those that were, uh, I shouldn't say those, this one particular person who had uh, the power to, to alter things. Uh, and so I go from needs improvement to a few months, six months later, put on uh, probation. I can see the writing on the wall. So when you hear me talk about me uh, walking into my boss's office and resigning, that you know that defining moment, right? You hear me say that there's a thousand defining moments in life, and 20 of those moments were radically changed their life. When you hear me say that, that was one of those moments on July 17, 2007 when I resigned from my job, right? I resigned from my job, right? I left with, uh, uh, in a position of power. I wasn't gonna allow a person to uh, put all this derogatory stuff in my corporate file when I know that wasn't me, right? So that's really where that defining moment came from. That's the story behind the story. So in essence, I was forced to retire because I wasn't going to allow this to happen to me or my, and my reputation uh, as an engineer. You see, the, the, the powerful part about the story, remember, your strength and weakness are, are right next to each other. I always wanted to retire. I just had never set a date. It's not like I picked July 17, 2007. I didn't pick that date. That date was picked for me. See, sometimes you are forced, right, to do something different, to change for the betterment of the cause of the mission that you ultimately going to be a part of. You know what I'm saying? So God works. It's, it's crazy how this thing works, right? See, the, the reality is, here's the reality. I wouldn't have made that choice on my own. I want you to think about this. I would not have made the choice to leave on my own. Not when I'm making $140,000 a year. Not when I'm making six to $10,000 a month part-time. I wouldn't have made that choice to leave on my own. Who would have? But it had the circumstance had to be created in order for me to take the next leap. I had to leave the 140, live with the six to 10 a month to now go and do the things that we've been able to do in the industry. Right? The circumstance had to be created for me to do that. Your strength and weaknesses are right next to each other. So, yes, it was a strength that I did so well, but it was a weakness because it created animosity amongst some peers. Right. But that circumstance changed everything. That defining moment changed everything because I realized at that moment that the change was not just about me. The change was not just about me. And you will realize that the change is not just about you. Right. It's about who you could impact. You just haven't met them yet. You haven't met the people yet. You know what I mean? And so the decisions and things that are happening to you right now in your life are for a greater cause. And here's why. Because it's a simple principle that I believe in, that there's no pain without purpose. Right? You're going to go through that pain that you're going through right now because there's a greater purpose that you got to serve, that you have to serve. And there's no one else that can do it the way that you can do it 
from your perspective. So your strengths and weaknesses are right next to each other. Celebrate that. Understand that. And make sure along the way that you're mastering the mundane to keep it simple so everybody can follow along in the blueprint that you're laying out for success. So, ladies and gentlemen, that has been another episode of Game Time. This is Noble Mike Jameson giving you today's playbook.